Welcome to Midwest Sportsnet. I'm Joey McWilliams. It is a very big privilege to be joined on the summit today by Drew Beard, who is taking over as the state director for the Oklahoma FCA, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Drew, it's always a privilege to get to visit with you, but tell us about your new position and, and what you are stepping into with the FCA in Oklahoma. Hey, Joey. Thanks so much for inviting me on the show, man. Thank you so much for the work that you do. Uh, to highlight and promote the athletes, uh, high schools, colleges, all over the state of Oklahoma, man. Do a great job. You've been doing it for a while, so thank you for that. You. Uh, you know, for the last uh, five years, I've served as the regional vice president for the Southwest region. That region includes Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Louisiana. Uh, you know, Joey, it's, it's crazy how God works, but uh, four years ago, I submitted a, a kind of a succession plan uh, for my time as the VP, and uh, that included 2025 and my son being in, in uh, high school, my daughter being uh, in the middle of junior high, and then my third son uh, being there towards the end of, of elementary school. And I thought, man, I, I could get rid of some of that traveling and, and move back home and, and serve as a, as a multi-area leader, uh, talent advancement director for the region, just something um, that uh, would, would cause me to travel less and be home more. Um, for the last year, we've had an amazing man by the name of Mark Heron, who's been serving as our state director here in Oklahoma. And Mark had come in at a, at a great time following a long-term uh, successful ministry by uh, former state director John O'Dell. And Mark knew uh, as a board of trustee member uh, that God was calling him to serve during the space and place. And he didn't know how long it would be, but uh, but he but he did serve faithfully and he did a wonderful job for us. And and I was having one of those uh, weeks where it just seemed like something was changing in my heart and in my mind. And I didn't know what that looked like. I, I'm not one to leave FCA in any way, uh, but just always wanted to be obedient to God. And, and uh, Joey, I'd gotten a call from Mark and he had asked me to, for, to meet him. And, and we had a good lunch and I could sense something was going on, but I didn't know it was, it was uh, him ready to step back. But um, I had actually made a comment to him and said something along the nature of like, Hey, would you want me to come and serve under you at some point, you know, in the state of Oklahoma? And uh, and he said, you know, that's why I've actually called you here. I'm I'm going to step back and resign. And, and I think you should be the state director. And uh, not completely shocked because, again, I knew something was going on. But but uh, but certainly uh, sad uh, that Mark was going to be stepping back. But but his statement um, that I should become the state director uh, started to resonate in my heart. Um I uh, went home and told Chelsea and talked to her about it and her eyes kind of lit up and, you know, we had been going through a season of me being gone pretty much about six weeks in a row, three days here, four days here. And, and so it was a long season, but uh, one that just really sparked an interest in her. And, uh, and so I, I started to pray. I called my supervisor in Atlanta and said, Hey, here's what's happening with Mark. And I, I just said, if you would, if you'd be willing, I, I think I want to would, would like to be considered for that, for that state director job. And, uh, he said, are you, are you sure? You know? And, and I said, you know, I'm not sure. Uh, I just know that some, God's doing something. And, and if you're willing, I want to pray about it. I'd love for you to pray about it. And, and he called me about a week later and said, Hey, if that's something you feel led to do, let's do it. And, uh, and, and I just, you know, remember the excitement in my heart was, was not much different, honestly, Joey, than when, when John O'Dell hired me, uh, back in 2008, before I went to Iraq, uh, I was anticipating coming home and fired up to come home and, and be on staff with FCA. And so uh, so that's kind of where I'm at today. I, I, I officially you know, started December 1st. Um, we've uh, we found my replacement in the region and he's going to take over February 1st of 2023. So I'm still feeling a little bit of a dual role. But, man, I tell you what, FCA is is an amazing place. And to have the history we have in Oklahoma to try to continue that that uh, amazing uh, miraculous legacy uh, of God in this ministry is, is super exciting so so thanks for that man well FCA's had tremendous leadership under John and Mark and I have no doubt that 2023 is going to be starting off with great leadership with you as well drew T talk about what FCA does the fellowship of Christian athletes yeah. what all does FCA do yeah so man great question many people may not know 1954 a coach by the name of don mcclannan had a vision uh he said you know basically if athletes can promote cigarettes and drinks and this that and the other surely they can promote their relationship with jesus and so 
he uh, had written letters to many people across the country. I think 19 letters total uh, to try to gain some momentum. And one man by the name of Branch Rickey, who uh, owned the Brooklyn Dodgers at the time, uh, Branch Rickey also became famous for uh, breaking the color barrier in Major League Baseball with Jackie Robinson. And so uh, Branch Rickey gave Don McClannan five minutes. That five minutes turned into five hours, and uh, Branch Rickey wrote the first check uh, to get FCA started. Uh, and so uh, that was that was back in 1954. It started as a camp ministry. Many people have a testimony of their lives being transformed by Jesus at Estes Park and Black Mountain or up at OSU or OU at, at some early camps that we did here in Oklahoma. And uh, and so God's been been so good to us. But our our, our vision uh, in FCA, it's a big vision to see the world transformed by Jesus Christ through the influence of coaches and athletes. Our mission is to wake up every day and to pursue leading every coach and athlete into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ and his church. Uh, we have four core values, uh, integrity, serving, teamwork, and excellence. And we believe uh, in the Great Commission. Uh, we believe that we should engage coaches and athletes with God's word and our lives, that we should equip them to do the work of the ministry that they've called them to. And then the ultimate goal is to, is to make a disciple who goes and make others disciples. And that's 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. And we hope to empower coaches and athletes to use the ministry of FCA uh, to make disciples, to go and make disciples. And so we do that in a lot of ways, uh, Joey. You know, that's kind of the, the formal way of saying it. But most people are familiar with the idea or the term the huddle. The huddle is an environment where coaches or athletes join together. And uh, as you can see in the, in the background of my uh, picture there, that number 18 picture, uh, there's a young man at a camp who is looking at a huddle. And that's a, a group of men and women, athletes or coaches who get together, uh, grow in God's word together, make it their own. And then ultimately they break the huddle and go and do it again. And uh, and so we do that with one on ones, events, all kinds of things here in FCA. We're here on Midwest Sports Net talking on the summit with Drew Beard, who is the new state director of the FCA in Oklahoma. And I encourage you, please like this video, share the video, and please subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that as we talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond, talking about Jesus today as well here on uh, the summit. And we always enjoy doing that on this channel. This is a great channel to stop by and hear from folks like Drew who aren't uh, afraid to talk about their faith along with sports as well. Drew, a former quarterback at Southeastern Oklahoma State University, 2001 to 2004. And I had the privilege to get to broadcast his games when he was playing back then. So I, new head coach at Southeastern now. Well, the old head coach is the once and former coach, I suppose. I, I, I kidded Bo Atterbury as he's stepping back into the role there that he's the Grover Cleveland of Division II football coaches now. Drew, can you tell us about that, just a little bit about your time at Southeastern? Yeah, you know, Southeastern was a special place, um, uh, so much so that any – email or text message or response you get from me, you see three words, that's fight, finish, and faith. Um, Keith Baxter had a vision and a plan, and he wanted to raise young men to do right. And uh, he defined doing right by fighting the fight, finishing the race, and keeping the faith. And, man, that left us open to a lot of creativity and a lot of opportunity, uh, Southeastern, and let us become the men that, that God intended us to become, uh, to create an environment where we could where we could uh, create and be who it is that we're supposed to be, not try to be copies of others. And uh, and so, you know, the Southeastern community, the Southeastern family, the Savage family, Savage Storm family, as they are today, uh, is a very tight knit group of people and uh, none so much more than than Bo Atterbury and uh, watching Bo uh, coach Atterbury, you know, coach while I was there watching uh coach at other places, but then, you know, kind of take over as the head coach and to see the success he's had. Um, I think he would probably say it as well. There's, there's a foundation that was set years ago. And uh, anytime that you build your house or your life on a strong foundation, um, things go the way they're supposed to. And uh, so I can't, um, I can't even express how excited I am for Southeastern uh, for coach Atterbury and April, his family and what, uh, what God's going to do and how he's going to use them to, to, to make a difference in the lives of young people. They're not just on the football team, uh, but in, on the campus and in the community. So I'm excited for Bo. Drew, I have to ask you this really quickly also, and, and just to, to look back at your time at Southeastern and, and getting to, to see you play those four years, uh, there are moments that stand out to me still 20-some-odd years later that, that still stand out to me. I remember – uh, a very wet uh, Wantland Stadium in, in uh, the University of Central Oklahoma back in 2002, and you pretty much took the 
whole Savage team on your back, marching them down the field. 7-6 victory against a very tough Broncos squad then. And uh, that was a low-scoring game, high-scoring game. I mean, you put up more than 500 yards of total offense, five touchdowns against Eastern New Mex- Mexico to start the 2004 season, which was uh, a season that went to, took Southeastern to the playoffs in Division Two. Is there a moment that stands out to you? Yeah, so funny story. The Washington Warriors, which is where I live now, Washington, Oklahoma, played uh, for the second year in a row for the state championship there at Wantland Stadium. And uh, my son was with me and my daughter was with me. And I said, you wouldn't believe it, guys. But at one point, this entire field was mud. And uh, and, and uh, I said, uh, we scored our last touchdown in that south end zone. And I said, believe it or not, um, uh, I scored a touchdown, a one-yard touchdown run in that game. And uh, the way we won the game was that our snap from the center on the extra point was high. Clay Patterson, our holder, batted it out of the air. It was so muddy. It landed uh, uh, up. We kicked the ball through to take the lead seven to six. And that's how the game ended. Um, but uh, that's that was a phenomenal memory. And, and it was fun to kind of relive that with my kids the other day. Uh, thankfully, the Warriors won as well. That was a great, great day. And uh, man, there's there's many memories. But here's a little inside story for you. Um, so it's uh, Brian Odom and I are sitting in the stairs there in the, in the gym uh, or the locker room for the visitors. And it was such a miserable day. And, and Joey, I'm a competitor. I usually don't want to give up. But I looked at Brian at halftime. It was six to nothing. And I said, Brian, if we don't go out and finish this game, I think I'll be OK. And uh, <laughs> I can't believe I said it, but I'm so glad we went back out and uh, did what we did. And uh I don't tell that to too many people, but now many people might might know. But but uh, but I remember that like it was yesterday. I could walk to that place right now. Yeah, and and Rich now known as Richardson Stadium. Yeah, uh, Rich, Rich, Richardson Stadium. That's right. Yeah, but, but it was Wantland back then, and and they they definitely wanted some land. It wasn't that long after that when you guys were ankle deep and probably deeper than that in mud that they went to a turf field. Yeah. Uh, not long after that at, at UCO, mm-hmm. but. Great memories, and and I appreciate that. You're one of my favorite yeah. southeastern quarterbacks of all time, and I know there have been Troy Taylor, Jeff Mosier, uh, you know, and and recently now Dalton Hatley, who's uh, uh, the now the all time passing leader, back to back three thousand yard seasons for him as well. But yeah. in getting back to what we, I want to finish off in talking about FCA. I I just could talk with you for a long time about southeastern memories, but uh, FCA. What do the kids do then to get involved? How do they get involved in their their local chapters? Yeah, I always love it when when parents or uh, had a coach that I coach with currently right now. I said, how does my son get involved in FCA? And and the thing I like about FCA is, is you just got to show up. You know, um, I, I don't know if if uh, many people are uh, have ever struggled with a fear or a doubt or a worry about showing up to a place that they've never been before. Uh, but when it comes to faith, it seems like just showing up can be a difficult, difficult task. Uh, there's a lot of fear around it. And uh, I'm so thankful that FCA is, is, is such a place, that a safe environment for people to just show up. They don't have to try to be somebody they're not or be somebody that, that, that they desire to be. They can be themselves and they can, they can start from there. And so you may uh, still in, in Oklahoma and Arkansas, Louisiana, I've seen it. There's still some schools you walk around and there's a piece of paper that's held up and it says uh, where the cafeteria, what FCA huddle, when lunchtime. And it's just that simple. And uh, for whatever reason, because there's athletes involved, because there's sport involved, because there's influence, you know, young people show up. And uh, and sometimes that's the greatest appointment that anybody could ever have. Uh, there's been story after story after story of life transformation because someone just showed up. They didn't know what they were getting into, and uh, but they just showed up. And so uh, that's what I would say is for young people, coaches, athletes, uh, adults, uh, parents, you know, kids that aren't playing on campus, if, if there's a sport uh, that you're involved in in some way, form or fashion, FCA has got a place for you. And uh, we want you to be involved because, as I said, our mission is every, every coach, every athlete. And before every coach uh, was a coach or every athlete was an athlete, they were a child. And we believe that every child deserves to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. And that's why FCA is here, here doing what we're doing. Drew, I have to tell you, I really appreciate what you're doing. I'm I'm extremely excited for you and the new opportunity and what uh, lies ahead for you in 2023 and beyond for your family as well. And and now, hopefully, things working out there. It's yeah. it's really something when you you feel something on the inside, something in your spirit. And you know God's uh, doing something there, and then to get to see it come into motion. Drew Beard, the state director now for the 
for the FCA in the state of Oklahoma. His reach goes beyond that. You've had an impact already on the field, and what you're doing now is, is so much greater. Drew, thank you so much for also taking time with us here today on the summit. We appreciate you. Yeah. Hey, man, Joey, thank you so much, brother. Thanks for promoting and helping us out.